Welcome to another broadcast from Victory Church Odessa with Gian, Tracy, and all the wonderful church members. Today, you will listen to the Word of God, wonderful worship and praise music, and the practical application from Scripture for your daily life. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith as you reflect on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our pastor, Gian. First quote is the topic of our worship set today, 6, 2023 worship set. From the church, and I invite you to go to the website, download the bulletin of this teaching. Code, it's on the screen. Open your phone, camera, point towards that QR code, click on the link, then you will be able to download the bulletin with all the scripture. Thank you so much, dear beautiful church member. We are doing it again. Praise the Lord. We have what we need and more than what we need because the Lord God is so faithful and wonderful to us. And yes, 432-268-0007 is the way to go for those who are here in the United States to support our ministry. Other than that, if you are in another country, you can go to Victory Church that you and for the tab give, and then you will be able to do it as well. Thank you for the opportunity that you are giving us to present these teachings to you. And I remind you, Victory Radio 24 Victory Radio that US is the way to go. I encourage you to continue listening to the radio. You can remember you can play it on your device in the background while you continue doing your things. All right. First quarter from Victory Church. Honor for me to be here with you and share this wonderful scripture. And we begin by reading Matthew 5, verse 3 to 5. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, please, Lord God, guide us through this reflection. The read comes from the easy-to-read version. And it says, The foolish girls took their lamps with them. They did not for the lamps. The wise girls took their lamps more oil in jars. When the bridegroom was the girls could not keep their eyes open, and they all fell asleep. What are we talking about? We are talking today about the importance of being aware of what's going on in our lives and being prepared for that. Get ready. Getting ready. Today, I want to share with you a couple of things related to your own life and whatever it is what you want to accomplish with your life. How do you do your goals, my friend? Well, the two important things that you need to consider when you say, I have these goals for my life, is what exactly is the goal, like a measurement, right? And when. It's not what only. You need to decide when. That is the thing with your goals. Now, every so often, you need to evaluate those goals. In order to evaluate your goals, you are going to obviously consider what is what you were trying to accomplish, the measurements, right? You evaluate this, what is what is happening, and then you evaluate the dates that you gave. Are you getting there? Are you getting close to that date? You see, the what and the when. But eventually you will start to evaluate the who. Why is that? Well, because somebody has to do certain things and all those goals. Are you following? Somebody has to do it, my friend. Somebody has to give an answer about what you are trying to accomplish with your life. Now, every so often when you evaluate, you must update your goals. Again, what is what you are trying to accomplish? Measurements, right? When, again, dates. Who is responsible for what? And when you are updating your goals, you need to consider the how. Definitely, somebody has to do it, but how? 
So you see, it's not just about a dream. A dream is a thing, right? But it's not good enough. You need to set all these variables, put it all together in order to say you are going to accomplish your goals. But eventually you will need to correct things. And when you are correcting things, unfortunately you need to fire somebody. <laughs> it's not fun, right? But you have goals, you are not accomplishing the goals. You did your evaluation and you updated the goals and you are willing to work with people, but eventually you just need to make some decisions. Sometimes it's a supplier that you need to fire. Sometimes it's somebody that is providing a particular service for you. Sometimes it's a direct employee, right? But I will tell you that these items that you see here on the screen, my friend, are the type of things that you will say, yeah, definitely I cannot keep working with this person or this company or this employee or this co-worker. Why? Because this person is incompetent. The incompetent is going to be fired. Some people feel offended when we use the word incompetent, but, you know, not competent. Degrading a person simply is not able to perform the job. So, for example, if you hire me to, to do some type of work related with um, something that I don't know much about it, let's say mechanics in a pickup truck, I am an incompetent person for that task. I don't know much about that. So I will be incompetent. So the, the question is, why did you hire me in the first place? Why did I accept that job if I didn't know anything about it? Or if I was not sure, why did I take it, knowing that I could fail? Bottom line is the incompetent is going to be When you are correcting things in life, you have to be strong. You must be strong and say, no, you just can't do this job. Maybe it's not your area. Go somewhere else. Or if you are talking with a company that is really not doing the job, you're going to say, you know what? I cannot deal with you because I'm paying this fee. and mm -mm. So you're fired. And you replace that company, that supplier, for somebody else. The second reason why you should fire someone or a company is because they are lazy. What do you do with someone that is lazy? <laughs> you know, I remember my mother doing a little test when she was uh, about to, to do some work in the house. It's funny. I will tell you what is what she used to do something on the floor and when my mom was walking inside of the house and this person was following her my mom stepped on top of that thing just left it there on the floor just to turn and watch this potential helper will do and my mom says if the person doesn't pick up that thing that tells me right there is not the right person for me. <laughs> it was a tricky thing. I was right most of the time about that because the person that is lazy is not going to move a finger unless it's being told. And what can I tell you about liars? Are you going to work with a liar? Are you going to hire a company that lies all the time? Ten is the price. It's ten. And then in two weeks, well, plus this, plus that, now it's 15. Wait a minute. <laughs> lies, lies, lies. And what about individuals that are dishonest? They trick you. They manipulate you. They say one thing and they do other thing. You don't need somebody like that working with you or for you. 
the same thing happens with the cheater. You know, people that are in the same company, working the same company, sometimes are cheating the company through many ways. You don't need a person like that working with you or for you. Mm -mm. Cheaters. And of course, addicts, you don't need working with you. Whatever the addiction is, those individuals are not going to perform right. You know, eventually it's a matter of time. You know that. Individuals, whether they are drinking too much alcohol or smoking marijuana or doing any other drugs, cocaine or whatever else, whatever else, all those substances are going to affect their brain. Sooner or later, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. And imagine the responsibilities that uh, you are giving to somebody that is under influence of drugs or alcohol in some points. That's a bad thing. Somebody like that. So you're going to fire them. Right? It's your job. A quarter is just 25% of something, right? In terms of a for example, the sports game, they say it's a quarter. There are two, three, four quarters, right? It's just one percentage of the total of that thing. When it's about the, the process of the second coming of the Lord Jesus, or when the church will be raptured, taken to heaven, the disciples were curious, right? They wanted to know a little bit about the timetable of God. And it's interesting because they asked them to the Lord, Matthew 23, 3. They say, what will happen to prepare us for your coming and the end of time? <laughs> and the Lord answered, no one knows when that day or time will be. The sun and the angels in heaven don't know when it will be. Only the Father knows. And you will find people everywhere trying to guess about that. And people love to talk about the end of times for a strange reasons, you know. Because the truth is, you live for the Lord, you serve the Lord, you do what is right, you live a holy life. You are devoting yourself to serve the Lord Almighty. What difference does it make if the Lord is coming today or in five years or 50 years or 500 years? If you live right, you know, just like when you are doing your job in your company. It doesn't matter. Why do you need to know when the audit is going to come or your supervisor to check on you? When, when you're doing the right thing, you, you just really don't care if they come to check on you or not. You are just doing your job. The same thing happens with the Lord. But some people are so curious. They, they want to know. And the Lord tells us, tell us many things about it. But when, when you and I are talking today about accomplishing things and achieving the goals that we think about it and all that, it's important to consider the teachings that the Lord Jesus gave us here precisely in Matthew 25. From verse 1 forward, we're going to read the story, an illustration that he gave us to understand certain things that we discuss today. Okay? So let's read. At, the, at that time, when? When the disciples were talking about, right? When is going to be the, the end of time? At that time, God's kingdom will be like uh, 10 girls who went to wait for the bridegroom. They took their lamps with them. Five of the girls were foolish and five were wise. The foolish girls took their lamps with them, but they did not take oil for the lamps. The wise girls took their lamps and more oil in jars. When the bridegroom was very late, the girls could keep their eyes open and they all fell asleep. At midnight, someone announced, The bridegroom is coming. 
come and meet him. Then all the girls woke up. They made their lamps ready. But the foolish girls said to the wise girls, Give us some of your oil. The oil in our lamps is all gone. The wise girl answered, mm, No. <laughs> the oil we have might not be enough for all of us. But go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. So the foolish girls went to buy oil. While they were gone, the bridegroom came. The girls who were ready went in with the bridegroom to the wedding feast. Then the door was closed and locked. Later, other girls came. They said, Sir, Sir, open the door to let us in. But the bridegroom answered, Certainly not. I don't even know you. Jesus said, so always be ready. You don't know the day or the time when the Son of Man will come. Sad, huh? Why did the Lord Jesus give this illustration about the ten girls, my friend? There are several things we will discuss. And do the story together. You know, it's interesting when 50% of the group were foolish and 50% were wise. Somehow it's like us. <laughs> Half of the time we are intelligent. <laughs> Half of the time we are thinking clear. But half of the time we are it's like we make a good decision and a bad decision. We make a good decision and a bad decision. We are kind of uh, bouncing, you know, in between what is right and what is wrong. The fifty percent of the girls is one thing that I that I can tell initially because it's it's just like that sometimes. You know that? It's very interesting when you think about it, how how we do that. Sometimes we stick more with the good things and then we bounce again to the bad things. You know, that is hard to, to be the, defined in which side we will be in, in most things. The Lord told us in the book of Revelation later, later speaking to the angels of the churches that he was against one type, one of those churches because they were not even cold or warm, but they, they were in the middle. And the Lord wasn't happy with that. You know, my friend, you need to make a decision with the Lord. Stick with the plan and do it right. Now, we need to think about the figure of the Holy Spirit here. Because in two areas, this figure is being presented to you. I don't know if you noticed, but it says clearly that the lamps, ourselves, needed oil. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Lord God, Father, creator of heaven and earth, dwells in his holy throne. The scripture says that the Son is at his right hand. The Lord Jesus is not on earth, my friends. You understand that. You know that. The Lord Jesus came. He was conceived. The power of the Holy Spirit was the power that created him in Mary's womb. A hundred percent men, because it was conceived like a baby, but without the participation of a man, because needed to be pure, holy. So the miracle of God was that Mary was able to conceive this holy baby. Some people wonder about that and they say, how that is possible? Well, how do you think what we see exists? By the power of God. The Lord spoke. When you think about Noah and the flood, the animals coming in, many other things, fantastic things, beautiful things that the Bible narrates, is all true. And we know it's possible because God is the God of the impossible. 
Now, I have a little joke for you. It's about a little girl that uh, one day was talking with uh, her mother. And in that area where they were talking, it was a living room or something, there was somebody listening. And uh, so the little girl says, Mom, I was wondering about Jonah. How is that he was followed by, by the whale? And, and the mother said, well, it's in the Bible, right? This is what you have read in the Bible, right? Yeah, well, well sweetie, one day when we are in heaven, we're going to ask Noah, right? The little girl says, thank you, mom. You know, she was happy with the answer. But the third person sitting there said, and how do you know? That Noah is in heaven. What if Noah is in hell? And the little girl said, well, in that case, you will ask him. Bravo. <laughs> we read the Bible. We understand the Bible by faith in our hearts. We believe what it says. What it says. The scripture says that the Lord Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit is because... The Lord Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. If the scripture says that he died, it's because he died and then he was risen. He's risen and then ascended to heaven where he is and one day he will come back. Okay? So, Lord God Almighty, his son Jesus, they are in paradise, heaven, in this celestial place that we have no idea where physically it is. We know that. We all agree that we just don't know. We know what the scripture says. And the more that the scientists and telescopes and spacecraft, and they try to figure out what is there, there and there, the more that they discover, the less that they get to know about the end of the universe. It's almost... An impossibility for us humans to process that, right? So, who is here then with us? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. In this story, the fact that these girls were needing oil tells us that they didn't have a direct relationship. That's the analogy a deep, profound relationship with the Holy Spirit. How about you? Because let's face it, the one that dwells in our hearts by faith is the Holy Spirit. The one that you hang out with all day long is the Holy Spirit. The one that is with me in my heart, leading me to speak is the Holy Spirit. The one that is in you, your heart, Leading you to listen and understand the word of God is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. Now, question. Half of the time or all the time? Are you listening to the Holy Spirit all the time or half of the time? 50%? Sometimes you have connections with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you don't. That is the challenge that we see here. Because the success in your life is going to come to you when you keep a 100% of the time a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Then is when you are going to succeed in everything, my friend. Because the Word of God will come to you to lead you and you understand things. But the guidance of the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do in this moment. He will lead you in your decisions. The other important thing that we read here in this story is that these girls yelled, Sir, Sir. But other versions say that instead of saying Sir, they were saying Master, Master. Or you can say Lord, Lord. The interesting thing about it is it's being called twice. And it's interesting, again, because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity of God. 
So let's go to basic doctrine. When you pray, you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this illustration the Lord Jesus gave us about these ten girls, the wise ones and the foolish ones, tell us a lot about the Holy Spirit. And that is why you need to think about how are you personally relating with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis? Are you talking with Him? Do you hear His voice? Do you feel when He's telling you, don't go there? I know He's talking to you. I know you, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. He's going to be talking to you. And He says to you, I don't like this. I don't want you to do this. Stop doing that. Don't use your phone for, for those things. Don't use your computer for those things. Don't use your TV for those things. Don't use your body for those things. You don't go to meet with those people. Don't buy those things. The Lord, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. He is talking to you. Are you listening, paying attention, and obeying Him? This story it has to do entirely with you and the Holy Spirit. When you wake up in the morning, the Holy Spirit is there inside of you. You talk with Him. When you go to sleep in the night, the last thing that you are saying is, thank you, Lord God, for your love and your mercy. You are talking to and through the Holy Spirit. There is another section in the doctrines that Paul gave us that say that when you are speaking in tongues and in a language that is not able to comprehend. You are not able to comprehend what you are saying. And you are speaking those words. Is the Holy Spirit speaking through you. Same thing happens when you are desperate and you are crying and you are sobbing. And suddenly you can, die, you can be speaking things that you don't know what you are saying. And the same scripture tells us that when that happens is because the Holy Spirit is edifying you. It's a very different situation when the Holy Spirit is in the midst. We are in the midst of something. The Holy Spirit leads you to say a message. Then you might say certain words, speaking in tongues. You might say that, but you will be able to give an interpretation of that message. You follow? That is the difference. This story about these girls is entirely about the Holy Spirit. The oil, the oil, light in the lamp. <laughs> it's beautiful, right? But at the same time, analytically, we have to understand that this illustration has to do with preparedness. You know you have to wait for the bridegroom. You know you have to have enough oil for the lamp. Prepare yourself for whatever you have to do. So, you and your life and your things, whatever is what you do, you need to think about that. You need to be able to prepare yourself and do constant measurings of your things. It's, it's what we call self-evaluation. How are we doing? How are you doing, my friend? How are you doing with your goals? Measuring, evaluating, those type of things. Now, if there is something that a lot of people are not doing today, and that is why there are so many accidents, is because people are not paying attention to details in their lives. People are not paying attention to their driving. People are not paying attention to the balance in their accounts. People are not paying attention to due dates. People are not paying attention to backing up files on their computers, making copies of documents that are extremely important. They are totally unaware of expiration date of certain documents, certain credentials. And, <laughs> and what about the driving? What? 
licenses to operate equipment, to use software, or any other things that have to do with dates, permits, etc. People are not paying attention to many things. They say things, they talk. You know, it's incredible. You see that in, in, in for example, work meetings. Here's the supervisor telling everybody what we're going to do, and I want you to do this, and please take note of this. He's there talking, you know, thinking that everyone is, is there, engaging. And people are there nodding, right? People are they, there, and, and they go, and they put the face that, are, you know, the I am paying attention face, which is what? And you see their mouth, and they're nodding, and they write. I wonder what is, is what they are writing. Sometimes I think that they are just writing, you are a fool, arrow, and then a little drawing of the supervisor. <laughs> Boy, let me tell you. Individuals that they, they are not paying attention to the details of their work, their business, they are going to fail. How can you have a good year if in the first quarter, we are just at the end of February, one more month to finish the first quarter. How can you have a good year if your first quarter sucks? If the first two months of your year are terrible, no success, just problem after problem after problem. How could you see the rest of the year going well? But if you don't even know where you are in your evaluations with your plans and general goals, you are not paying attention to details in your life, my friend. And when you are not paying attention to those details, nothing good is going to happen. You know, today talk, people are talking about organic, which is an interesting thing when it's about food. I understand. But when it's about the development of things, let's say you and your business, you grow organically when it's a natural growth in your business. If you have your own business, you have one client, this one client should recommend you with the second person. This person will be happy eventually as a good customer of yours, should recommend you with a third person, and on and on. That is what is called organic growth. If you are an employee, you work for a company, you are growing organically when you assume one responsibility and you accomplish it, and you do it right, and then, of course, naturally, organically, you are going to assume more responsibility. It's not the other way around. Oh, I did all this, so now I have more free time, less things to do. <laughs> now, that's the lazy person. Organically, naturally, we are made to assume more responsibilities, to grow. That is the meaning of organic in your life. But the thing is, no one is going to move forward spiritually, materially, financially, in any other area, career, in any area. If the person is not willing to take time for reflection. Reflection is important. And you know, reflection is like you grab a mirror, right? You grab a mirror <laughs> and then you take the mirror. There is a reflection of you in the mirror, right? Of course, but we, you know, I'm not talking about that reflection, my friend. You know it. It's about thinking deeply about what's going on with what with with whatever you need to evaluate your health your mental health your spiritual health your finances your work your career your assets your debts your money 
your family, your whatever. Reflection is about thinking about things. Every person should be investing time every day reflecting, thinking about things by himself. Why people are so afraid of taking time by themselves to sit down with a certain things? So it's, it's very important that you have something to write. If you are against notebooks, well, use your phone or your iPad or I don't know how technologically wise you are, but the point is, when, when you write things and you reflect about those things, and if you really have goals, measurable goals, with amount and date and, and who and how to do this, you see, you will evaluate things much better when you see them in front of you, not just mentally. There are people, my friend, that are extraordinary smart. They carry their projects in their heads and they can tell you where is everything and how things are in each one of those projects. There are people like that. I admire them. But I think it's not a bad idea when you and I, average human beings, writing our plans, writing our goals, evaluating our projects, checking directly what is the balance in the accounts, what are the things that we need to pay in the next payday, and on and on. <laughs> and that is why with your notebook, you should have a calendar. When are you supposed to do this and when are you supposed to do that? And as a result of that, you will prioritize. You will accomplish a lot of things in life. You will have a wonderful 2023 when you have a great first quarter. The quarter is not finished yet. It's just the end of the second month. You can continue moving forward and re recover time and resources and you have one month to have a great first quarter. You can. It's all based on your ability to reflect about those things. And when you are handling all those things, remember, you must communicate. You must communicate with whomever. Your supervisor, if you have your own business with whomever you are accountable to, and of course, if you, if you want to have success in what you do, you need to communicate with the good Lord. Communication with the Lord, communication with, with the ones around you, communicating with suppliers, communicating with employees, communicating with customers, communicating, communicating, communicating. And here is the people telling all the time, I hate to communicate with others. Well, unless you are a very, very wealthy person that you need to talk to anybody, that's okay. But most of us, we are not super wealthy. We need to work and work with people, with our families. With our neighbors, suppliers, we need to communicate. So let's do it. Let's do it. Communicate with yourself, my friend. You must communicate with yourself. Do you remember that I told you when you must fire somebody? I told you. If you are working with someone that is in incompetent, fire him. Lazy, fire him. Liar, fire him. Dishonest, cheater, addict, fire them. Those people are not good for you. They are going to destroy you. Well, I want you to switch the angle of this. What if you are the, the one that is incompetent? What if you are the one that is lazy or a liar? Dishonest, 
cheater or an addict? What if you are the one that, are, that is doing the wrong thing? You are close to be fired. <laughs> is that what you want? To be fired for those reasons? Listen, there are cases, of course, when the boss doesn't like you and he's going to fire you anyways. You know? The board of directors or some of the owners, and well, there are specific situations where good people get fired. But if you, my friend, you are incompetent in your work, lazy, you lie, you are dishonest, you are cheating, or you are you are going to be fired. There is no other way to say it. It's either you get it right or you are going to be fired. And that's not right. That's why mo all of us, we must go to the scripture and try to understand the importance of being wise. The wise Girls, they have plenty of oil. So, let's talk about wisdom, right? Proverbs 1, 7. The beginning of wisdom is the fear and respect for the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. It doesn't say wisdom is only that. There's the beginning of wisdom. But if you don't fear the Lord, if you don't have any respect for God, you're going to be fired. It's just a matter of time. You are one of those fools. You're going to be fired, not from the job, from life. Being foolish rather than being wise. Listen to the second part of the verse. It says, but a stubborn fools hate wisdom and refuse to change. Uh, excuse me, sir. It says learn. I know that. But you said change. I know. But it says learn. I know. So what is it there? To learn is to change. If you keep doing what is wrong and you don't stop that, you are not learning because you are not changing. It's stubborn fools. They know this is wrong, but they keep on going. This is not a good thing, but they keep on doing it. The stubborn fool will repeat the same thing again and again and again. And what is the result? Failure. Is that what you want in your life, my friend? I don't think so. Honestly, I don't think so. Now, we want to know about wisdom? All right. Proverbs 2, 6, 8. The Lord is the source of wisdom. Knowledge and understanding come from his mouth. He gives good advice to honest people and shields those who do what is right. He makes sure that people are treated fairly. He watches over his loyal followers. Do you see the blessing that will come to you by being wise? With fear and respect for the Lord. And then you go to him for wisdom. Because as soon as you are connected with the Lord, you know what? You will understand many, many, many things. Almost everything you will understand. Because you go to the source, which is the word, and the eyes of the scripture. He gives advice to honest people. Good advice. And you know what else? Is shield. For anyone who is doing what is right, a shield, the Lord himself, he shields you, he protects you, that you are going to be treated fairly. The Lord God is going to be there for you. He is going to protect you. How? You just don't worry about it. You believe in the scripture? If it's a promise from God... Is telling you today to become wise and understanding, gaining more and more, obtaining more and more of His Holy Spirit through His Word. You will have the understanding. He will become 
a shield for you, and he will make sure that people will treat you fairly because he watches over his loyal followers. He watches over his loyal followers. He will watch over you as long as you keep being a loyal follower, loyal to the Lord. It's not just 50% of the time, not in the things that you want to obey, on everything, my friend, on everything. That's why I need to tell you this. There is a need for you to repent, my friend. Repent and change. The Holy Spirit is right now upon you. And it's up to you if you say, okay, I'm going to do it. Very good. You do it. You receive blessings. Let me show you this scripture. It talks about the blessing of being healed. I want to tell you this. I feel that right now there are people that are struggling. Many people are struggling now with sore throat. This word is for you, my friend. We were healed because of his pain. So lift up your hands. If you are struggling with sore throat, and say after me, Dear God, heal me because I am healed because of Jesus' pain. Is what you say, Lord, in your word. And there is the scripture, Isaiah 53, 5. I see people that are struggling with joint pain, difficulties to move, needs issues in their feet, ankles, shoulders, big difficulties. And you know what? Even here, right now, whatever, my friend, whatever illness you have, the Lord wants to heal you. So, all together, lifting up our hands. Let's do it. Lift up your hands. You watching or listening and you here, lift up your hands and say with me, my Lord God heals me. Receive that healing, my friend. And those great miracles are the result of the great job our Lord Jesus Christ did on Calvary. Because as we read in the screen, John 3, 16, God loved the Lord, the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him, everyone who believes in him will not be lost, but have eternal life. Everyone who believes to believe. You believe because you listen. You listen the voice of the Lord God Almighty through the preaching, the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon you, you believe Jesus is the Son of God. You are part of God's family now. Simple as that. It's the only requirement, my friend. Don't doubt. Take it into your heart and you say, well, I'm a believer now. I'm a believer. What do I do now? What do I do now? Well, you commit to your local church and you get baptized. And then start your training. If you have no idea what to do, it's very simple. Just continue watching and learning. Next Sunday, on March 5th, message 332, I will be sharing with you something that might, it might scare some people. Touching Jesus with dirty hands. <laughs> Can I do that? I will explain to you what is the meaning of this things we change of course but i'm gonna tell you always there is hope in the name of our lord this was the message first quarter, first quarter. go to the church us share the message with everybody and remember victory radio 24 7 i cannot wait to hear from you send an email contact us through the website I'll be here to you guys and thanks so much for everyone being here in the house of the lord today glory to the name of our Lord jesus christ See you next time. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income 
and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not ruin the produce of your land, and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of Armies. Victory Radio is now available 24-7. Visit our website, www.victoryradio.us. Great music, positive messages, optimism to keep you company while you work, or when you drive, or when you are at home cooking. Faith is what you need. Faith comes when you hear the right thing. Victory Radio is the new thing. Find us on the website, www.victoryradio.us. Have a great rest of your day. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Geon TV app. With the Geon TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By G and Carlo Vitutoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Welcome to this website, MyNewMentor.com. Here you will find the tools to establish a direct communication with your new mentor, Gian. Get the available spot on Gian's schedule and set your appointment to have an audio or video call via Skype with Gian. Also you took all of my tears You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You are and give up ready to throw the towel of my life away it is on those days when I realize how weak and fool I can be considering my situation I cry out 
Where are you God? You promised me to be with me here all the time. You said that I will not be alone. You promised me that you will be with me no matter what, no matter what. And I know you are mine here with me all the time. You sustain my life. You are by my side. Over 
No more snow My heart you filled With your love Now in my home I hear the birds I see the kids playing Boys and Like the ocean wants the moon, like the grass needs the rain, come and take my pain away. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart, if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not. Nobody, how can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart, if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not. Nobody, sing to me a love song again, fly me on your airplane. It is absolutely amazing what I am feeling. Never before I experienced what you have done to me. I know that in the past I didn't see things as I do now. But honestly, you have changed everything for me. And uh, I don't want to let it go. I don't want you to go anywhere. Stay here with me, by me, because you make me feel alive. And I know that you love me, and I love you. I love you with all of my heart. I belong to you. You brought me a new life, a life that is absolutely profound, real, and true. I feel alive, you make me fly. I'm in the clouds, you make me alive. This is my night, I'm gonna fight. I feel the wind, I'm gonna win. I feel alive, you make me fly. I'm in the clouds. Blessings of God are going to come to you when you are listening to the right thing, God's Word. You can find us in all of these platforms. Search for Gian TV on Apple TV, Roku TV, and Fire TV. Do you prefer a podcast? Find us too. And remember Victory Radio 24-7. The kingdom of God is near. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. Feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, 
to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.